In September 2020, Zoe Bueller, heavily pregnant and due for an ultrasound in an hour, was handcuffed in her kitchen in front of her family. What on earth? Excuse me, what What on earth? Yeah, just put your phone down. Can you, like, record this? I'm in my pyjamas. What's I this? an ultrasound in an hour. Because yeah, pregnant. she's pregnant, so... Well, I'll take it easy. What's this about? I have an ultrasound just let me in an hour. Let me finish and I'll explain. It's in relation to a Facebook post, in relation to a lockdown protest you put on for Saturday. Yeah, and I wasn't breaking any laws by doing that. You are, that. actually. You are breaking all. That's why I'm arresting you. Six officers stormed into her home after she advertised a socially distanced rally in Ballarat, Victoria, on Facebook. The rally for freedom was a desperate cry for help against the tyrannical COVID lockdowns imposed by the Andrews government. The rally never happened, but for two years she faced the stress of charges, but then they were quietly withdrawn. But that hasn't meant Zoe's life has gone back to normal or that she forgives those who allowed her arrest to happen. Tonight, after years of quiet dignity, she speaks out in a Sky News exclusive. Zoe Bueller wants justice and she deserves it. Zoe, thank you so much for joining us today. Walk us through what happened that day. What, what had you been doing when the police suddenly barged in? I was actually having a nap uh, because I was pregnant and very tired. Um, there was a knock at the door. My partner answered the door. Uh, the investigator at the door said, is Zoe Bueller here? Uh, that's all he said. And as soon as my partner said, oh yeah, I'll just go and grab her, um, they just started barging in the house. So they just barged straight past my partner um, saying, you know, uh, Zoe, you're under arrest. Um, was terrifying. These, uh, I think there was about six of them were suddenly uh, right throughout my house. Um, you know, my children were down in the living area playing. I was having a rest. Um, so they just swarmed the whole house. Uh, they were in every room. Um, and yeah, and I didn't know what to do. Um, I pulled out my phone. I thought, oh, I'll, I'll call my mum. Maybe she'll help. Um, but no, that wasn't the case. Uh, and then I thought, oh, maybe I should call the police. You know, there's all these mm. strange people in my house. Like, what is going on? I've got intruders in my home. I should call the police. But obviously they said that they were police officers. Uh, so I thought that was no point. Um, and I don't even know why, but I pulled out my phone and I clicked live on Facebook and I thought maybe someone will see my live post and be able to help um, mm. or rush over to my house or something. I mean, you must have been terrified and, and as a mother, again, your protective instinct must have been wanting to make sure your children were okay because they must have been so scared as well. Yes, I was a shaking mess, which you probably couldn't actually tell on the live, but I was sweating from head to toe and I was shaking and I was very, very scared. Um, I could see my children, I could see that they were all right. Um, yeah, obviously being very early in my pregnancy, I was terrified that I was gonna lose the baby because I was in just such a heightened, uh, scared state. Um, mm. So yeah. So, you know, we, we saw the footage of when the police were in your home, but what happened after that? Where did they take mm. you? Uh, so after that, thankfully they allowed me to get dressed um, and they did uncuff me. Um, and then they took me down to the police station for an interview in an interview room, uh, took some fingerprints um, and yeah, um, I was there for about three hours, I think it might have been about roughly. Yeah, so I was I was very confused. Um, you know, obviously I was didn't understand that I'd done anything wrong or anything like that. So yeah, when they were interviewing me, they were asking me lots of questions and um, like, you know, they kept asking me like, um, under the current lockdown rules, uh, do you understand what you were doing was wrong? And you know, the whole time I was telling them, I. I didn't understand what I was doing wrong at all. Um, so yeah, it was all very confusing. I kind of couldn't wrap my head around why I was arrested. Yeah, it took ages to wrap my head around it because I just had no idea, yeah. I mean, you're pregnant, you're a mum and 
Police barge mm. into your home, take you down to the police station and, and fingerprint you like you're some criminal when all you done was write yeah. one sentence on Facebook. Yeah, a lot of people don't know. I actually spent the next day in hospital with a... Uh, what was I was exp experiencing a possible miscarriage, so all the stress actually did take its toll. Um, but luckily, she stuck in there. So, <laughs> yeah. oh Zoe, I'm so sorry to hear that. And and she's now a beautiful two year old. Yeah, she's a fighter. <laughs> but but this has been traumatic for your family. Uh, you know, is this something that your older children still raise? Only a week ago, my uh, eight year old daughter was uh, saying to me. Uh, Mummy, why did you get arrested? Um, and I told her, you know, oh, the police made a mistake, honey. You know, um, Mummy actually didn't do anything wrong. Um, and she said, well, no, you must be a bad guy, Mum, because the police only arrest bad guys. Um, yeah, so it was pretty, you know, upsetting, you know, that my kids are looking mm. at me like I must be a bad guy um, and trying to explain that to, you know, a six and seven year old <laughs> that no, mummy's not a bad guy. They can't really wrap their head around uh, that the police made a mistake, you know. Yeah. So, no. And, and of course, yeah. I mean, you don't need me to tell you, but you were incredibly courageous and it's you know, a great injustice that you were treated like that, um, having people storm into your place, fingerprint you, treat you like a criminal, put you through that, especially when you were pregnant. It's, you know, people, people your story went around the world. No one around the world could yeah. believe that this was what life was like in Australia during the COVID lockdowns. Mm. You, you must have had so much reaction yeah. internationally. Yeah, I... Can't even remember. I think it was like 10 million views on the Facebook Live. Yeah. It might have even been more. I can't remember. But um, it's it's upsetting, really, because you know everyone around the world got to see me because I clicked live on Facebook. There is also a lot of other people who were experiencing, you know, similar things. So. It was very scary time. It was really scary, you know. We all like to say we're proud to be an Australian, but at that time it was scary to be an Australian, really, so. I mean, the government had basically turned Victoria into a police state. Yeah, yeah, it was horrible. We all felt like we were prisoners. And so what happened afterwards? You know, I, I know you sadly lost your job during Melbourne's never-ending lockdowns. How else did this impact mm -hmm. on you, the, the way you were treated? Yeah, it put a huge strain on myself, my partner especially, because he was the person who was closest to me mm. while I was falling apart. Um, yeah, it actually, you know, yeah, I really struggled um, with it all, I would see a police officer and as sad as it is, I would be filled with anxiety and yeah, it was horrible. You know, particularly when pregnant and everything is heightened and you're so worried about your baby and, and, and after the hospital visit and, you know, the anxiety of it all is, is so much greater than it would be under normal circumstances as well. Are you considering yeah. your legal options now? I mean, you'd presumably have a very strong case to sue <laughs> Um, the, the Andrews government. Yes. I do want to sue them. Um, I haven't actually taken the step of speaking to a lawyer as yet uh, because I have been busy being pregnant with another child. Um, oh, congratulations, Zoe. Just gone... <laughs> Thank you. So he's actually only three months old at the moment. So uh, being pregnant again, I didn't want to go through the stress of suing of them and court and everything like that. But um, it's still on the cards. It's definitely something I'm considering. Um, a little bit scared to take on the police, if I'm being honest. Um, but I do think there is justice that needs to be served. Um <laughs> Yeah, so when it comes to serving justice, I think, you know, I should. Um, I've never received an apology from the police, which I think I should also receive an and, apology. And from the Premier? Uh, any apology from Daniel Andrews? <laughs> no, no apology. I think he's the one I definitely deserve wow. a, an apology from, really, because the police were only following his orders, so...
And have you had any explanation? Because eventually, you know, when you started going through the court process, uh, these charges were dropped. I think it took two years for them to be dropped. But you, have you had any explanation for what went on behind the scenes? Um, no, no. It was very last minute. They really dragged it out all the way. Um, they kept me, you know, uh, experiencing fear that they were going to charge me and that I was going to be charged, you know, all the way. Um, so, yeah, the whole time I was worried that I was going to be charged. Um, mm. So we were preparing for a full three-day hearing uh, when we were prepared for the three-day hearing. Um, and then they just suddenly dropped the charges and no explanation. The outgoing Chief Health Officer uh, for Victoria, Brett Sutton, has just been named Victorian of the Year. He was the one who authorised and encouraged the lockdowns during the COVID pandemic. And as you well know, Melbourne ended up having the world's longest lockdown. I mean, we saw in Victoria the toughest mm -hmm. restrictions, some of the toughest restrictions internationally. What do you think of Brett Sutton being given this award? Well, he's definitely not worthy of the award, if you ask me. Um, yeah, honestly, I think it's disgusting. I think all the fear he spread instead of factual information, mm. um, you know, the, the, hell, the hell he put Victorians through, um, I'm honestly just baffled. I have no idea how he has been awarded this. Um, mm. I'm just baffled, really, yeah. I'm a bit that I could say the same as to I'm a bit baffled how uh, Dan Andrews got voted back in as well. So it all none of it really makes any sense because you talk to your neighbour, your friends, you know, your auntie, your uncles, peers at work, anything like that, and no one was voting uh, for Dan. Uh, no one likes him. No one likes Brett. So it's really confusing how these men get rewarded for their bad mm. behaviour. You know, have you always had a lot of courage? Have you always been an activist? Or was this a one-off and you just felt so strongly about this issue? <laughs> yeah, I guess sometimes you just get the courage out of nowhere. Um, and it was something that, you know, my heart, my soul maybe uh, was screaming at me to do something um, because I didn't want to just sit back and do nothing. Um, I had no idea if many people were going to show. I've never organised any sort of protests in the past or anything like that. Um, but I just wanted to try do something because it was just breaking my heart watching everything that was going on. You're not particularly political on one side of politics or the other? Uh, so it's hilarious. I don't understand politics at all. <laughs> it comes to voting and I freak out and I go, oh, gosh, I don't know what to do and I hope I'm ticking the right boxes. And, uh, yeah, I've never got into politics. I honestly don't understand them at all. I just follow my heart and what my heart believes is right and wrong. I mean, you were really the face of Melbourne's unfair lockdowns and unfair police treatment, and you came up against the government trying to control what you could say on social media as well as do in real life. Um, and I, I know you're not across this, but there may now even be tougher restrictions on what people can post on social media. How do you feel about restrictions on freedom of speech at the moment? Well, we all deserve freedom of speech um, and it's a scary reality um, that in the future we won't have freedom of speech and we will be told what is factual and what isn't factual and at the end of the day it's all most of the time just opinion. Um, so why is one person's opinion more important than another person's opinion and how is one person's opinion on something decided that that's a fact? Zoe, I can see you've brought in your little Baba Luca now. Look, I just wanted to ask you about how intrusive the police were. Did they raid your home? Did they take your phone, your computer? You know, what else did they do? They ruffled up the house a little bit. Um, they did take mine, my partner's laptop, both of our phones. So uh, that was very concerning for my partner to be left with the children without any form of communication. Uh, with anyone. Um, 
Yeah, so they did return my partner's phone and the laptops. I think that was about three days after the arrest. Uh, but they actually kept my phone all the way up until the court hearing a couple of years later. And that, that phone is appalling. Uh, actually. Appalling. Yeah, so actually when I got that phone, when I got that phone, so it was only about, I'd only had the phone for a few weeks. So it was a brand new iPhone, you know, or sorry, Samsung. Um, but uh, the phone has never worked since them having it. So they actually damaged the phone and I haven't been able to get the phone working since um, having it returned to me uh, two years later. So that's a $3,000 phone uh, that they damaged so yeah Zoe I'm so sorry to hear you've been through all of this but good on you for your incredible courage for standing up to authority and and for persevering um, and being such a wonderful role model for your four children thanks for having thank me thank you thank you <laughs>